it's Cliff here. Another exciting episode of Rapid Turn. Uh, this one's turned out to be documenting a bit of an issue I've had again with oh, this latest Rapid Turn. Oh dear, I seem to be jinxed with Rapid Turn. Um, the spindle sensor um, seems to have been what the trouble is and uh, this video is showing how I uh, found the fault and uh, hopefully resolved it. Um, and at least it will be documenting the problem should it occur again for anyone else out there as to the likely fix. Um, I know it's occurred in at least one other case or at least something very similar, a chap in the UK. Perhaps he wouldn't, wouldn't like it if I quoted his name online. So anyway, let's just say a guy in the UK had a problem with his spindle sensor and I spoke with him uh, via comments last night. Um, so let's hope this is just an occasional fault uh, but even if it is a, a, a fault with them it's not like the spindle problem it's just a little sensor that may need replacing or adjusting okay so I'll, I'll go on now to show you just to, just what was involved in that okay well the new rapid turn is all set up now and I've put a little test program in there and I've just run it and I've got a problem, I'm not sure what it is. Some of you software experts will probably be able to pick it. I'll just run it now and um, show you what the problem is. So let's just run this cycle. Okay, so it's all running there. If you watch the process speed, put this on 100%. This is stopped. And going really kind of slow. These status lines are clicking on and off. This is kind of stopped. And then it goes normal. Clicking on and off. Rabbiting back out okay. Going for a little bit. Hesitating. Hesitating. Spindle's running okay, it's just the uh, feed is strange. So the Z feed is really strange, it's stopping and starting. Hmm, I don't know what that is. It's going again now. Wrapping it out okay. That's weird. Okay, so process of elimination. Luckily, I've still got my old rapid turn, so I've just plugged that in. Um, and we'll run the program again now with the old rapid turn. So the only thing that's different is the rapid turn. Everything else is the same. So let's just run the cycle. Coming on. Not hesitating, it's going fine. Okay, so that has to mean by the process of elimination that the uh, fault is with rapid turn, with the new rapid turn unit. And the only thing I could think that could do that would be the uh, little sensor on the spindle is not giving a signal through to the software uh, or, or it's giving a weak signal or an erratic signal and it's causing it to hesitate all the time because that's really the only interface um, and the the light and the status the LED and the status is going on and off on each revolution so it seems to be uh, connecting with it uh, but something's wrong in that circuit somewhere. It's the only thing I can think it can be. Well, what is it? Oh, I hate these hiccups when you're in the middle of a job and you're trying to get production out and then suddenly there's a problem and ah, get to the bottom of it, Cliff. What is it? Well, the only real difference between the two rapid turns, I mean, they're, they're just motors. And they're both switching on and off okay. And they've got a little uh, rotation sensor. Um, they both seem to be working okay. 
and that's really all it is as far as um, as far as the hardware and the software is concerned as far as the electrics are concerned it's just a motor and a sensor switch um, if I turn the spindle round we have a look at the encoder um, you see it's going on there okay so it's going on off on off it's working okay but maybe it revs how do I know it's going at revs so um, maybe there's something wrong with that um, signal switch okay so trying to be logical about this this is always difficult isn't it you, you're annoyed and impatient you're trying to think what is it what is it the, the signal is obviously feeding into the software and possibly that is causing um, if it's getting an erratic signal then the software is not able to process smoothly and as far as I can see it that's the only difference between the the old rapid turn and the new rapid turn it goes fine with the old rapid turn it's not going well with the new rapid turn the motors turning on and off the only other thing that's left is the sensor the spindle sensor uh, and it's working fine when I turn it round uh, by hand so let's try throttling back the uh, RPM to really slow and run the program again and see if it'll go smoothly okay we're going now motors on yeah see it's going now so let's increase the revs a bit ah, as soon as I do that it stops it's alright at that speed not at that speed ok here's the rapid turn manual and at the back there's an exploded drawing you can see there is this signal sensor and there is the little flag it screws onto the spindle um, the sp signal uh, sensor goes into the sheet metal bracket here um, but at revs it's not working at high revs it's not working properly so maybe the gaps too great or something's loose I can't really get at it without dismantling it properly which means taking the headstock off and taking the base plate off hmm that's a couple of hours work isn't it damn um, patience I've got to have patience all right I'll have a look at that well here we are now we've got it apart on the bench taken the base plate off and looked inside the headstock it's really interesting it's die casting oh you can see the ejector pin marks here and there so it's a die casting that means they must be make, in planning to make a lot of these because they've had to pay to get a, a die casting die or mold made um, to uh, injection die cast them or a gravity die cast them into a mold. Um, well, that will help to get the production unit price down, but just a much higher startup price than if it was machined out of aluminium. Um, I don't know why I'd assumed it was machined out of a block of aluminium, but um, obviously it's die cast. Quite a thin wall section there. That's about, um, no, I haven't got a ruler in front of me at the moment, but a um, bit heavier there where the bearings go. Anyway, um, on to the problem I'm having with the sensor. So that's the flag. And um, that's pretty solid little, looks like a steel flag screwed on. And there's the sensor. So that that's down there being actuated by the flag. So um, really it's not loose or damaged or anything. And the flag's tight. And that sits like that. So the only thing is possibly is a bit far away uh, or a faulty 
faulty sensor. Maybe I'll take the one out of my other rapid turn and um, see if that gets it going. Well, there's the little sensor there. I wonder how it triggers. It's, um, you can see there if I bring an Allen key near it, it triggers it. So I thought, well, maybe it's magnetic. So then I've got some black plastic. No, it's not triggering it. So maybe it's not light, maybe it is magnetic. But then I get a piece of copper, and that triggers it. Huh? How can that be working? That's a mystery. It's not a magnet because it's copper, and it's not a light because it doesn't work with plastic. Well, I've got the base blade off, it's a good chance to demonstrate how it works. So there's two pins, a fixed pin here and an eccentric pin here. And um, they, they operate in the center T-slot and there's three T-bolts that clamp the base down. But um, when you're adjusting it, you have, say, one of them tight. Um, probably not that one because that would interfere with the operation. So you'd have this one just nipped up slightly on there. That's just slightly tight and you turn this one and that skews the whole base around. So it's just an aid to help you to clock it up uh, in line with the x-axis quickly and easily. Quite a cunning little mechanism that. Well it's a bit more than an aid because if you lock up the lock nut here, um, you could then next time put it back on quickly and it, and it should realign. I mean obviously there's going to be some clearance um, between the, the two pins in the T-slot. But if you pulled it forward or backwards evenly, um, then you should be able to reproduce the same position each time. If you're taking rapid turn on and off, it's a good feature. Okay, well here's rapid turn number one, the one that seems to be working fine. So before I take the uh, sensor plate off, I've just looked down and measured the gap. It looks like this is a uh, feeler gauge slot for setting the gap. And it's approximately 20 thou or half a millimeter um, between the sensor and the flag. Well, here's a close-up of the sensors. That's uh, the uh, one that I think might be faulty. There's the original one that seems to be working fine. They are slightly different looking. Um, it's got written on the label for those electronics experts out there. LM8 301NA proximity sensor inductance type. U6-36 volt DC NPNNO 1 to 200 milliamps uh, SN 1 millimeter. Whatever all that means. Anyway, I'll set it up in the uh, head and see, in the headstock and see whether it makes any difference. Okay, so I put the uh, old sensor from my first rapid turn in the new rapid turn head and uh, that seems to be what the issue is. I'll just run it now and show you. So I've just got this little cycle here. And it's uh, fine. No hesitation. All good. Woohoo! Well, that's a relief, you know, when you have a breakdown and you've got a lot of urgent work on and you're thinking, oh, I don't need this at the moment, stress, stress, stress. I should have stayed up late last night until I got the problem solved because I've left it to this morning and went to bed all stressed out and didn't get much sleep. So what's the point in that? I might as well have worked on it. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty ragged, but I put the uh, old sensor in the new head brain's not working very well and that seems to be the problem sorted now it's fine so the uh, new sensor seems to be an issue um, and um, luckily I still had the sensor from the old rapid turn so that's great news what a relief I can get on 
put it all back together again and carry on. I'm fascinated by that little proximity sensor. I've just been doing a little bit of quick wiki study on it. Um, so the sensor seems to send out some type of electrical field and when the flag comes around um, it interferes with the signal coming in or out of that field and that um, sets off the signal. They don't look to be too expensive so I might get another one in just to have in stock. Um, in New Zealand dollars they're only about ten dollars or so um, so it's you know maybe they'd be only about five or ten dollars US so it's, um, it's probably a bit of freight on that but you know it's not a big deal guys so that's good news. Well that's enough video footage now to end that uh, video. I uh, don't want to end on a gloomy note. I think there's been enough uh, gloom and doom for Tormark lately. They've had a tough time of it. Um, this is a relatively minor problem and um, it just seems to be the proximity sensor was faulty. I tried moving it. I don't know if I showed you in the, in the films but I tried moving the old one in closer and different positions but that didn't help it needed um, complete replacement of it but on a positive note the next rapid turn video will be much more positive so don't go away and give up on rapid turn um, i've got it up and running now and i'm producing nice little parts um, with the various tool change positions running automatically and all seems to be going well all right cheers thanks for watching guys <laughs>